girls in court. My name's Morag Butler, and tonight, live and with a live audience, we are very excited to have Jenny Hankins and Alfred Lord... I knew I was going to say that. <laughs> Alfred John Hickling. How often does that happen to you, Alfred? I'm so sorry. I knew I was going to do that. Yeah, I'm really, really sorry. They're going to perform Appalachian music for us. And I'm very, very excited. I mean, I'm excited about having you here, but I'm afraid um, to uh, announce to you all that Granny's Attic are coming to perform here in November on the 13th. So grab your tickets very, very quickly because they're, they're just amazing. And uh, the last time they were here, we had such a good time. It was brilliant. Just like we're going to have this evening. Whole digging stop. Um, Right, uh, the raffle. Everybody who's in the, the room, you are all entered in for the raffle. Okay. You, you my, my viewer at home, you can join the raffle by either donating to Jenny and Alfred or by joining in the chat, which is happening um, at the side of the, the picture at the moment. Uh, the first prize is our CD by Jenny. All right. You can have a CD of your choice. The second prize, which I have to say is much more coveted, is um, uh, um, Who Gives a Crap Toilet Roll, <laughs> which at the moment is uh, their series um, Where's the Loo, which is based on Where's Wally, and there's a picture of a, a something, and you have to find the toilet that's hidden in the picture. Yeah, this, this means that people tend to spend longer in the toilet than they actually need to do. But anyway, so... We will draw that just before half past seven, just before um, Jenny and Alfred's last song, okay? Um, so to donate to Jenny, you can do that by using the, the thing that's running along the bottom of the screen, which is www.roslincourt.com stroke donate. And thank you for doing that if you can. If this is their job, you know, it's what they do. They need to, they need to eat, they need to um, put... Shoes on their children's feet. They need to feed their bears. They, they, they need to feed their bears. Okay. <laughs> Jenny can explain that later. I'm not going to. Okay. Now, um, we have a floor singer this tonight who is actually um, has been staying with us in the bed and breakfast, Christopher. And... Uh, <laughs> He is actually, he's in a band in London called The Other Brothers. Yep. The Other Brother Band. The Other Brother Band. It's a great name, The Other Brother Band. Um, his name is John Broad, and he's going to perform for you on this, um, on this microphone, but he is approximately seven feet tall, so there's, <laughs> something's going to have to happen between now and then. Um, <laughs> If you are, if you like what he does and you want to buy a CD from the other brother band, um, you can buy it on Bandcamp. Okay, so great. Here he is. Yay! Perfect. Thank you so much, Morag. Excellent guessing. How's everyone doing tonight? Nice to meet you all. I'm John. I'm one third of the other brother band, and I'm going to play the whole. <laughs> There's a hole right in the middle of the road Each time I look it's going further below It's big and it's round People watch and make sounds As they surround what they found in the ground Somebody ought to fill it in But I've got a feeling That it might be some time Till it's out of I saw a lady push a pram, looking awfully jammed, and I am wondering, should I stop her if I can? She put her left foot first, then she started to curse, oh, I heard from her words, it was the worst. Men with spades came 
went to fill in, but they made a deeper fool. And now I've fallen, oh, it might be some time till it's out of my mind. A thousand faces on the wall, and they're all the same. They got them all, those who fall and then they mm, And I'm hoping mm, that they're joking And we're smoking Yeah, we're smoking Oh, I see bikes to the left and bikes to the right Oh, yikes, I worry an old man on two wheels nearly head over hills looking hill over the hill now how he feels men with spades came to have a go but they made it go further below oh it might be some time till it's out of my mind i hear gravity pull but i ain't no fool cause i know that your assist is cool thought i had escaped but it keeps changing shape beyond expectations and my reservations somebody please fill same species. <laughs> well, that was rather wonderful. Thank you. I think I might be visiting um, Bandcamp. It's great. Now, Jenny Hankins grew up in the coal fields of the Appalachian Southwest Virginia, yeah, amongst a family of miners, moonshiners, and journalists. Was that a big disappointment? <laughs> As, as expected, yeah, yeah. as um, expected, yeah. yeah. She's a songwriter, she's a multi-instrumentalist, yeah, and a flat foot dancer, hurrah, yeah. Jenny's best known for the sound of the born in the bone twang <laughs> yeah, of her voice, yeah, and her true tales of mountain life. Jenny's a, queen, a keen quilter, but she forgot to bring her quilts oh. this evening, which is a bit irritating, I but know. never mind. She was going to do a stitching and singing workshop here, but um, COVID got in the way. It was going to be good. Yep. Um, the photo that you see on our, all our advertising is Jenny and her great-grandfather's um, house, which he built in 1800 and something, 1880 something. Yeah. It's not there. It's in all the advertising that we've done. <laughs> yeah, it's that one behind me there. That oh, one yeah. there. Yeah, Christopher. And um, <laughs> Alfred John Hickling also plays a lot of instruments, and uh, and he sings as well. They've performed together for many years, oh. and um, I couldn't quite find out if he flat foots or not. But we'll see. We'll see as the evening. Um, or do you make quilts? How's your quilting, Alfred? Uh, how's my quilting? My quilting's been neglected. Just <laughs> 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 You've been Brilliant. doing a lot of bear taming. I have, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, well, we'd like to hear about that. <laughs> Jenny Hankins and Alfred John Hickling, the stage is yours. Let's welcome Aww. them to the stage. Thank you. <laughs> well, good evening, everybody. Hello, hello. Um, it's really exciting to be here because, wow, this is our first uh, concert for a live audience besides the Maverick Festival, which we played about a month and a half ago. And of course, people were kind of way out yonder at a festival, and you're right here with us as if we were at Mama's, which is really nice. And 
I am indeed Jenny Hankins, and this is what I call my Yorkshire brother, uh, Brother Alfred. <laughs> so um, I used to come over here to play uh, concerts uh, from the States every year since 2009, and in 2010, Alfred and I were on the same five-band bill or something in York and um, in the basement of a picture house, and that's when I heard his band, which is called King Courgette. <laughs> They're York's, and I would say England's only all-vegetable family string band. And naturally, they just adopted me as one of their children, which is great. And that gives me a chance to say, hi, Papa and Mama Courgette, because they're watching on the hi, YouTube. Hi, Papa. Hi, Mama. <laughs> Alfred's parents. And then I fell in love with a mysterious Englishman who's here tonight in the back lurking about. And so I moved over to England. And um, so this is where I live now. And I just try to maintain the traditions of Southwest Virginia and Southeast London. Which is all right, you know, as long as you've got some place to dance on the floor, it's fine. But um, I come from a tiny place called Jewel Ridge, which is in the coal fields of the Appalachian Mountains. And all the songs that we're going to sing for you tonight are true. They're true stories of my family that I've written from the stories that my grandmother and her sisters and my great grandmother and uncles have all told me. And we're going to start out by singing. Um, Three songs all in a row. They're just kind of going to go together like a medley. So you can pretend you're like at a musical, you know. And we're going to start out with a song about my great-grandfather, Avery Smith. He went down in the coal mines when he was 17, and he died in a mining accident when he was 60. And when I um, asked my grandmother what her father was like, Papa Avery, she said, well, honey, he never saw much of the light. And that is because he worked six days a week. He went down uh, to the mines. He went to work in the dark. He worked in the dark, and he came home in the dark. And he did that from the time he was 17 until he was 60. And um, so I thought, well, that's, that's a song. And the only day that he saw the sun was on Sunday. And, of course, in Appalachia, you're in church in the morning and church in the evening on Sunday. So he had a pretty short window for seeing the sunshine in his lifetime. But he was beloved by his whole family. And the second song is a song for his eldest son, my Uncle Roy Lee. Now, Uncle Roy Lee was really handsome. He was like the George Clooney of Jewel Ridge. And um, Uncle Roy Lee decided to go down a different path than his father. He, he wasn't going to be a coal miner because he knew from the time he was a little boy he liked to tell people what to do. And he wasn't going to have too many chances to tell people what to do in the coal mine. So he decided he went off to a, to a university, you would call it. And um, he became a high school principal, so like a head teacher, and told people what to do his whole life and was really happy and satisfied in his work. But he did go down in the mines for one summer, and that's because it was going on senior year of high school. And... Um, he decided his goal for his whole last year of high school was that he'd like to go on as many dates as possible with the girls of Jewel Ridge and Tazewell County. But in order to succeed at that, he needed to have his own car. So he thought the best way to make enough money quick was to go down in the mines and get money for those, that car. So he went down in the coal mines, and at the end of the summer, he had enough money to make a down payment on a pink Chevrolet. This was 1950, and everything was pink. Washing machines were pink. Refrigerators were pink. The girls were pink. The cars were pink. And Uncle Roy Lee was ever so popular in his pink Chevy, and he, um, he met his future bride-to-be, my Aunt Phyllis, that year. And he was so popular taking everybody in Tazewell County around in that car that at the end of school year, he was voted the May Day King. And there's still a picture of him at Mama's house with his gold May crown in his car just a waving. And the last song is about his sister. Now, that's going to be uh, my Aunt Edith. Now, lots of us have lost folks during lockdown. But, uh, Aunt Edith passed away last year. She passed away on the fourth anniversary of my dad's own passing. And Aunt Edith was 94 years old. And she told me so many stories. There's a picture of her up here and everybody online will be able to see her. That's one of her famous photo booth pictures. 
and I have about 10 different pictures of her in these sort of carnival photo booths. I don't know whether the photos were at the drugstore or at the carnivals, but Aunt Edith had a special hobby, my grandmother called it, and she'd stand outside the photo booth, and if a fella wanted to have her picture made with her, because she was very glamorous, he could pay a dollar and she'd take her picture with him. And then he, he could go back home and tell anybody that she was his sweetheart. Of course, they didn't know because she was from a different county altogether. But so I've got this, all these different pictures of Aunt Edith with different fellas. And they weren't her boyfriends. They were just sort of, in a way, just pretending that Aunt Edith was their girl. And I, I'd pretend she was my girl too if it were me because she was just lovely. She told me so many stories of Jewel Ridge. So the last song that we're going to play for you in this set of three songs is one that we wrote that I wrote for her when she uh, when she passed away last year, and it's called "Good Night, Taswell Beauty Queen." So we'll hear Miner's Reward about Papa Avery, Taswell Beauty Queen about pa Uncle Roy Lee, and um, "Good Night, Taswell Beauty Queen" about his sister Aunt Edith. Yeah. 
you're driving in that Chevy with your Tazwell beauty queen. Just to drive in in that Chevy with your Tazwell Beauty Queen. Thank you so much. Well, you might have noticed in that. Taswell Beauty Queen uh, lyrics, if I enunciated, and <laughs> despite my American accent, I said um, uh, about her looking like Cleopatra before we turned the page of you dress like Cleopatra just before she left the stage. And that's sort of an oblique reference to a charity organization that Aunt Edith was part of in Fort Pierce, Florida, because she moved away from Jewel Ridge. We always thought she was sort of semi-famous because she had a swimming pool. And see, not everybody has a swimming pool, you, you understand. And um, so she was in a charitable organization called Daughters of the Nile, which I always thought was highly exotic. And so that's why we made the reference to Cleopatra. And then we say, good night, Tazwell Beauty Queen, you dealt us the perfect hand. Because don't tell anybody back home, but they used to have card parties at her house and nibbles and things, you know, but that's, 
that's not very church, you know. <laughs> they were all right. There wasn't gambling. <laughs> so um, anyway, but I, I want to say right now, um, t- uh, Aunt Edith's only surviving daughter is watching this um, from Fort Pierce, Florida. And I want to say, hello, Cousin Charmin, that I love you. And um, the other person who's watching is my grandmother. And I wouldn't have all these songs to play if I hadn't grown up with her in the summers. During the school year, we lived with mom and dad, of course, my sister and I. We lived all around the United States, from Boston, Massachusetts, to Las Cruces, New Mexico, to Omaha, Nebraska. We lived all over the United States. Um, But every summer, we would go back to Jewel Ridge in the southwest part of Virginia and live with my grandmother. And um, that's where I learned to play this kind of music. I learned to flat foot dance. I I learned to quilt. And... um, I learned all these stories. And this here is one of the newest stories that my grandmother told me over lockdown when I've been talking to her on the phone. So hi, Mom, Mom. I love you. (laughs) And this is one of the songs, the stories that she told me, which was um, she said that my great-grandmother, her mother, whose name was Narcy Hilton, that she lived down in a part of... uh, of Southwest Virginia called Whitewood along the Dismal River. The Dismal River. Yeah, the Dismal River. Don't you want to go, Brother (laughs) Alfred? Yeah, I mean, before anyone gets romantic associations of where Jenny comes from, (laughs) you just think about these East European settlers moving across, you know, the back end of Virginia and and going, don't you just get sick of naming rivers? (laughs) What are we going to call this one? (laughs) Well, it's pretty dismal to me. That's the one we ended up with because we were so far west, weren't we, in the state that they just run out of yeah. flowery so rivers. Life so, from the Dismal River. Life from the Dismal River is what we're reporting on right now. <laughs> and so, Mama said that they used to pluck the chickens and save all their feathers. Now, I'm a vegetarian, so this, you know, I, I can't say I've done any chicken plucking my own self, but, <laughs> but my great grandmother and her family used to pluck the chickens and they would keep all the feathers in a barrel. And then when they had enough, they would make feather pillows and feather mattresses for everybody to sleep on and everything in in the coal camp houses at Whitewood. Well, they had all their washing out and they had the feathers, the barrel of feathers. They lived literally, you go out the back door of the house and you walk two steps and you're in the Dismal River. It's right up against your house. And they had the washing across the line, across the river. And then they had the barrels of feathers out because they were plucking chickens and putting the feathers in. And a big flood came and carried off all the chicken feathers and all the washing and everything like that, which this was the kind of life they led. Well, when they weren't plucking the feathers, they were... Um, delivering milk and butter. And how did they do that? On horseback. And how did they churn the butter? They put jugs of milk across the horse and through the rhythm of riding the horse, by the end of the day selling the milk, they'd have butter to sell for the next day so they didn't have to churn as much. And so... um, That's called multitasking. That's called multitasking. (laughs) So, um, So this song is called Milk and Butter. And you'll hear me say, I got sweethearts up and down this mountain, and I've been known to tarry. But on your loving, I'll be counting. You're the only one I'll marry. And tarrying's just another euphemism that we have up north for various goings on that we won't mention on public television. So, <laughs> this is called Milk and Butter. Mama needs that dollar, honey, if the mine will pay no telling. Lord provides this, I know, butter and milk ain't selling. Jug and milk across your horse, churn butter while you're riding. If the Lord wants you, get you a course, be a fool for hiding. Milk today, tomorrow, but I don't and don't know my mind. Sweethearts up and down this mountain, I've been known to tarry. 
Paul Avery, who you heard me singing about. And uh, the way she got the fabric to sew her ever first dress that she ever had was she collected bloodroot all up and down the mountain. Now, bloodroot is something that people take for heart conditions, and it's also something that you can use to make red dye. And I have always been fascinated by the fact that you could collect enough bloodroot and sell it down in Richlands to get your fabric for your wedding dress. But um, in the song, because it's my job to write the songs, and I don't always write them exactly how they happen, she get in her wedding shoes because it was easier to rhyme than dress for some reason. But you know the secret of the story, which is that it was, in fact, her material for her wedding dress. So you, you know the secret of the song. But it's better to have shoes because you can mention dancing and you can mention riding Nellie the horse. So that's why we got this verse in there. So that blood route down in town by my wedding shoes. like to speak to our viewer and to say um, I hope you're enjoying the, uh, the concert in um, America and Australia and all the other countries that you're, you're watching in Scotland and um, the North East and um, if you are if you can please could you donate um, something to Jenny uh, and to Alfred because um, they, they really need an income because otherwise um, who knows what could happen they may stay here and <laughs> Might stay I just, here. Might just yeah, jump might. into the dismal river. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Also, um, I'd just like to say that we've had a message from um, Leslie Riding, who was supposed to be dancing this evening, but it, who is not feeling well and feels that it's rather unfashionable to turn up places not feeling well at the moment. So she hasn't turned up. Okay, we hope we f you're feeling better because uh, she's watching as well. Uh, so to, to Leslie and, and Banjo Dave, we're sorry you're not here. And um, we're going to carry on with, um, with Jenny and Alfred now. Okay, thank you. Aww. I want to send out a special message to my friend Deborah, who is uh, listening and watching in Australia, who got up at 5.30 in the morning this morning <laughs> to catch this. So bless you, Deborah. I hope you start to feel better. Deb Deborah, wake up. Wake, wake up. up. <laughs> Deborah. Wake up, Deborah. <laughs> can you, Deborah. And she's a big fan of Stanley the Bear, so I'm just going to get Stanley. Stanley, you're requested on, on the TV. Yeah? Ready? Stanley says, hey, Deborah. Aw. <laughs> Good. Very nice. She's a big fan. She's got Stanley house hunting in Britain so she can move near him. So, <laughs> Speaking of house hunting, this next song is um, it's called 17 of My Own, and it's about um, Aunt Laura. Now, Aunt Laura was married to um, Uncle Ted, who was the one who went... Uh, selling milk and butter on horseback with my great-grandmother. Uncle Ted was her brother. And they went out and sold uh, the milk and butter. And then Uncle Ted married Aunt Laura. And they moved to a new town, not near the Dismal River. I think they'd given up on the Dismal River. And um, so s speaking of moving house, they, they moved to a place called Clell, Virginia, which had about three people. And then they proceeded to have seven children. So this is how we established towns where I'm from. This is called populating. And we populated Clell, Virginia. And, um, and then my, their, um, 
well, Uncle Ted's mother moved there and, and father and then various other family members. So we established Clell, Virginia. And just as soon as all of us moved away, Clell, Virginia was no more. Um, but so we, we, we populated the town for a while. And um, they should have said, you know how you go into American towns that says like population 350. It should have just said population Hilton family. And uh, but so, but Aunt Laura, I have this most beautiful picture of Aunt Laura sitting in a white dress wearing white tights and black Mary Jane shoes and she is as clean and and is washed up and scrubbed up as an angel and next to her are about 10 of her 17 children and they look as raggedy and <laughs> and as ad hoc and put together as possible because you can just tell one of them wore the clothes and then the next one and then the next one until they had clothes had to be ripped up and used to clean the floor or something but those children couldn't look any happier. They're just smiling back at a time when people didn't smile in pictures, you know, where they all looked really grim. And um, they're all just sitting there and standing in front of this porch one way or another, and their stockings barely held up on their legs. And Aunt Laura's sitting there as clean as clean can be. And I always think it's so striking that she was able to stay so clean, at least for the time of that photograph, with all those children to mind. And I once read a book called No Time on My Hands about an American woman living out in the Midwest, living in what you call a dugout, which is an underground house, you know. And she talked about the sheer dirt and keeping up with the dirt every single day. And it reminds me of camping. You know, when you're camping, basically you spend all your time fixing the next thing you're going to eat because you're battling the wind the whole time. And then you make a cup of tea, and that takes an hour because the, the flame keeps going out, you know, and then the tent blows sideways. And, and I think this was a bit like what Aunt Laura's day was like every single day. Um, like until all 17 children were grown. So this is um, her special song called 17 of My Own. Got no time on my hands, honey, babe. Got no time on my hands, honey,
prayers won't make any sense to you if you don't know what an American biscuit is. Now, an American biscuit is like an English scone, but with no sugar in it. And that's confusing for me. I live in a confused world with an Englishman because everything is not right. It's, uh, a biscuit to you is a cookie, and a cookie to us is not a biscuit. A biscuit is a fluffy thing. And then sometimes he even calls a cracker a biscuit, which makes it deeper for me, even deeper. And um, so we make biscuits in America. And um, I had a whole discussion with my grandmother the other day about this because she said, well, are there other words that aren't the same? And I said, oh, don't get me started. <laughs> she said, well, tell me one. I said, well, there's the trunk of the car. She said, what do they call that? I said, they call it a boot. And she said, well, we wear boots. <laughs> and that's how it just keeps going at our house. One time, Graham, my mysterious Englishman, was visiting my grandmother, and he said, well, we do this about, we do it about every fortnight. Fortnight. And my grandmother said, what'd he say? I said, every two weeks. And this is the world I live in, you see. And I was visiting my friend Fiona in Hull, and I said, well, do they carry poster board at that shop? And she said, I don't know if they carry it. I think it comes in the mail. What I meant was, do they stock it? But we say the word carrying for stocking something in a shop. Anyway, this is the world I live in. Confusing, and isn't it? It's confusing every Where day. Where Jenny comes from, they're just known as static caravan park rubbish. <laughs> Instead of trailer trash. <laughs> so, it's a very, very confusing world. But biscuits, the verse in this song says, Run those biscuits round, your daddy's back from town. Well, what does that mean? It means if you're baking biscuits, it means that what you're going to do is throw them on high, which we call broil, and you call the grill. You see, I can't even cook over here. This is why I don't cook anything. Graham cooks everything. And so, so run the biscuits round means once the biscuits are almost finished, these fluffy things like scones, you just throw on the high heat, what we call the broil, and it just browns the top of them like, like lightning. Except when I make the biscuits, I'm not allowed to do that because you can see I like to talk. So I put on the high, and then I'm like, so anyway, Rachel, what were you thinking? And then all of a sudden a smell and a burning sensation comes out of the oven, and the biscuits are ruined. So I never run the biscuits round. That's not, that's not part of my cooking regimen. But that's what we're saying. So Daddy is almost back, and hopefully he's bought us a nice uh, bunch of animal feed in a sack that we can make a dress or some knickers out of. Knickers, which we call underwear. And, <laughs> and um, that's what this song, this is what this verse is about. by my family that um, they, they don't all like fit into one song. <clears throat> and I was trying to think of how to fit a bunch of uh, stories about my various aunts. We call, we call them an aunt instead of an aunt. Um, it's not... An ant is a small creature that you don't want. You know, you around, you know. <laughs> and in my world, an ant is somebody who tells you a story and buys you sugary cereal like Fruity Pebbles and things like that when you go visit them. So... Um, some of my aunts have great stories, but I couldn't figure out how to get them all into songs. And then I just decided I'd put them all into one song, and that's what we call a blues. 
Um, I'm pretty sure this is the first blues song that you'll ever hear where there's a, um, a verse about a competition about doing laundry. Mm -hmm. You heard it here first. It's like the Olympics of laundry in a blues song. And that's how we roll on Jewel Ridge because there was my Aunt Margie. Now, Aunt Margie was married to one of my, my grandfather, great-grandfather, Papa Avery's brothers. And she had, now get this, a gas-powered washing machine. So that meant that you basically, you know, like a lawnmower in America, you have to pull this thing like, boom, and it goes like that. And her washing machine worked like that. And see, that wasn't any good because she gave herself away because my great grandmother lived right across the mountain from her. You could see their houses from each other. And she'd hear Aunt Margie's washing machine, come on. And then her and her daughters, they just start scrubbing. They'd start scrubbing on the washboards because they didn't have a washing machine. And it was a competition to see who could get all their laundry washed up on the line, dried and taken down before the other one. It was a laundry rivalry. <laughs> Do you have this at your house? No, because the mysterious Englishman always says to me that he's never known anybody so fascinated by a washing machine as I am. Every day I put in laundry and he says, what, what can you possibly be washing now? What is there left in this house to wash? But he never knew anybody who could get such entertainment out of an appliance, but it's just the truth. And um, so the verse says, you can hang up your washing before the sun ever rise. You can hang up your washing before the sun ever rise, but the wind loves me better, and your washing never will dry. You know, that's what I call a feud. That's what I call fighting words. And um, what about your dressmaking? Yeah, well, the dressmaking. The dressmaking. Well, the blues with dressmaking. Yeah, dressmaking. No one's just written a dressmaking blues before. Well, yeah, I, mean, I just felt like I needed to get into the blues genre with some with dressmaking. With dressmaking and laundry. <laughs> So Maybe you're trying to get into the wrong genre. Right? I know, I know. But I, I, I'm not somebody to be deterred, as you know, Alfred. And so, so my Aunt Fanny, she had this, this extra, extraordinary talent to my mind because I love sewing and, and, and making of clothes and quilts and everything. You could come in her, her country store and stand in front of her, and she'd have you turn, 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 you know. And then she'd get a piece of newspaper and she'd draw out a pattern, and then she'd place it onto the fabric, cut it, and you'd walk away with a dress. And she never, she never had to put anything on your body or put a measuring tape around you or whatever. She could just look at a person and sew a dress for them. And I remember her daughter Geneva saying that she used to find a picture of something she liked in a magazine, and her mother would sew it up for her on the sewing machine before the school bus came in the morning. That was how good Aunt Fanny was at sewing. So she's in here. And which was the aunt who fell into the fire? The aunt who burned. fell into the fire who never got burned. So this is the, the name of the song. Aunt Fanny's sister, Aunt Nanny, went aunt to the... Aunt Fanny's sister, Nanny. Yeah, you following this? Yeah, Fanny, Fanny and Nanny. There's going to be a pop quiz after. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have multiple choice. Was it Nanny and Fanny or was it Nanny and Annie? Annie, what happened to Nanny? Well, Nanny was at the Pentecostal Holiness Church where you are taken in the spirit as you are, which is, is the kind of church church that I grew up in the summers where there would be speaking in tongues and falling out down in the spirit and anointing with oil and all these things and they had a big sort of um pot belly stove kind of you know thing in the church and it was blazing hot and it didn't have anything around it I mean you know if you got near it you you were going to get burned and Aunt Nanny was in the spirit with her arms up in the air and she fell down and put her hand on the pot belly stove and she put up her hand, and she didn't get burned. And so they always say that the Lord favored her because Aunt Fanny fell into the fire, but she never got burned. And that's how all these, all these um, verses came together. Now, there's one verse about going down to Seagrove. When you go down to Seagrove, that's in North Carolina, I know what you do. When you go down to Seagrove, I know what you do. You let that Carolina girl whisper sweet love into you. I won't tell you which aunt that's about. <laughs> I fell into the fire, but I never got burned.
people watching in San, San Carolina, South Carolina, South Carolina, California, Cornwall, Southwest Virginia, London, Gala Shields, and Louisiana. Woo! Uh, right, it is that exciting time <laughs> when we find out who's won the, the toilet roll. Would you like to... Um, oh, yeah. Or two, please. You can hold sure. on each of you. Okay. One. Shall I just do one? One, just okay. one. Okay. Right, do you want to read, uh, read out the first one? The first one? I'll read the first one. The first one says, Rebecca Hall. Rebecca Hall, that's my friend in Vermont. Rebecca! Rebecca in Vermont, oh. you just won. Super. Rebecca. Rebecca, could you possibly um, contact us in some way? Yes, yeah, she to, will. She's she will. good at contact. Is yeah. she? Uh, yeah. um, Morag at rosalincourt.com. And um, uh, yes, that's right. Uh, to find out what what um, CD you would like me to send you. Second one. And I think we get a CD for this person too because it's Bryony. Oh, oh Bryony! Bryony, so, fantastic. Bryony, since you're going to since you're going to the Congo on Monday for Medicine Sans Frontieres, is that right? Yes, Medicine Doctors Sans Frontieres. Doctors Without Borders. Can we give a round of applause to Bryony? I think you need to take some music with you on your iPod or your listening device, and you can get some. Um, you can take some toilet paper too. <laughs> which, which you may need in which the Congo more the than a CD, roll. if which, we're being honest. Yeah. Fabulous. <laughs> which might be far more useful. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so we're going to have one more for you people at home, and then the rest of us are going to have a little break, and then we're going to have loads more. So yeah, you should have come yourself. See, come yourself next time. Although people from Carolina probably can't. So, um, you've got one more song, please, and then we're going to have a break. Okay. So anyone who was slightly disappointed not to see Appalachian dancing, I think Jenny's brought her dancing shoes. Yeah. You're you're from Appalachia, Jenny. I think we've established this. That's right. How do you dance in your part of the world? Well. I learned how to dance from my great-grandmother, the very one who delivered the milk and butter. 
And the thing is, she tricked us. She tricked us because she said, children, I'm going to teach you to dance. And so she took us into the bedroom and put some of great granddad's big white athletic tube socks on our feet. We're just little people now, just small children. And then she took us and take us into the kitchen and she put pledge. You all have pledge over here. It's like a dusting um, kind of spray. It's the same thing. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And she put that on the bottom of the socks, each sock. And then we went around the kitchen floor and she taught us to dance. And we cleaned the floor. <laughs> and this was my first ever dancing lesson. But eventually I learned that this dance has a name. And it's, um, they might have been going to do like some Appalachian claw dancing, but I'm going to do flat foot dancing. And what flat foot dancing is, is a combination of three different cultures. It's got in it um, Scottish Highland dance. So you'll see that, which is this step, which is like. That's a modified sort of highland dance step because flat means flat foot. You don't put your legs way up in the air and you don't put your feet way up in the air. And so that's sort of modified highland dance. Then you've got Native American dance, which is this part. And they do it on one foot at a powwow and that would be from the Cherokee Nation. But because that wears me out, I do the modified, modified flat foot version, which is the two foot powwow dance, which is like that. And the last bit of it is the Charleston. So when you see my leg go woo over towards Stanley Bear, you know that's the Charleston part. So that's this part. Woo, woo, like that. And that's flat foot dancing. So. No bears were harmed in the making of this dance. <laughs> so um, we're going to do a song called Chicken Ridge, which is the road that takes you up from, from Jewel Ridge, where I was born, down to the Dismal River to Jewel Valley. You have to go on Chicken Ridge. And I had a fan recently say to me, all these years I thought that song was about a road that had lots of chickens on it. No. It's a road called Chicken Ridge because it was originally meant for mules, and if you pass a big coal truck coming up and you're going down, you're playing chicken with that vehicle to decide who's going to get over it. Because on one side, you have the mountain. And on the other side, you have a drop off. <laughs> and so Chicken Ridge is about who's going to move. It's a bit like your roads here in England for the most part. I get on a road and, and Graham says, this is the main road going from the west of England to the east of England. And I think this is a neighborhood street in America. <laughs> so this is Chicken Ridge. And I'd like to invite you all to sing with us. This will be our last song before the break. Got CDs for sale, brand new records out, actually three brand new records out. One of them called A Delicate House, another one called I Fell Into the Fire. You know where that's from. And another one is a children's record, and we might do you a song for that in the second half. But anyhow, old records, new records, they're all 10 pounds each. I'd love for you to take some home. And this is Chicken Ridge. Sing with us. You'll, it's easy to follow. We've got some plants in the audience who know the words. So. <laughs>
We've got another session with you Yay. in a bit. However, um, I suspect that John and Bryony may be disappearing. Yeah. yeah? Because they are, they're going back to London now, and they've got to cycle to the station in order to do that. And so I'd just like to thank John for his song, which was brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and wish Bryony good luck in her, um, in her new endeavours. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Fabulous. It's really good. Okay. I've also got to thank um, Phil doing the uh, film filming this evening. It was very appropriate. John doing the sound. Fantastic sound. Thanks, John. Chris doing everything else, being best boy in cameras and all sorts of stuff. Um, Lizzie out back doing the social media. And, of course, in her pinny, Una! Oh. At the bar. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, that's lovely. So um, we're going to take a break here. Uh, we've got a bunch of, um, of new uh, concerts coming up. Next week, we've got Jerma Adan's band. Really, really interesting band. She plays fiddle. She plays Haitian music and also British and American music. Very, very interesting. And um, after that, we've got... Uh, an, uh, um, a benefit for uh, Sonic here, which Sonic is Save Our National Health Service in Kent. Uh, we've got uh, that. That's going to be um, what's the band called? Jujubes. Jujubes. Yeah, they they they're blues. Yeah, and Friends. So Ruby Tipple will be there this that evening for all the fans of Ruby Tipple. She's um, the most amazing 15-year-old singer who plays here quite a bit, and she's really really good. I hope you're watching Ruby. And then we've got Raven's Wedding, so you can have a good a bit of a bop to that. Um, Copper Viper, who are a great folk band. And then Granny's Attic, of course. Yeah, so get your tickets for all of these things, please. Let's keep music live. Thank you for coming along. Thank you, Jenny and Alfred. Oh. It's really, really lovely. And um, I'll see you all next time. My name's Maura Butler. Um, goodbye, people at home. Stay here, people here. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>